All right, Mother Nature has dealt Las Vegas a bad hand last night. A storm brought another round of flash flooding to Sin City. Video captured water coming down inside the Planet Hollywood Casino, raining down onto blackjack tables. The storms caused damage up and down the strip, left thousands without power. And you'll remember that this comes after major rains in Vegas last month. The videos posted at that time also showed water pouring down from the ceilings at Planet Hollywood and at Caesars Palace. Several dire crises are playing out across Europe right now as officials warn the continent may be facing its worst drought in 500 years. In the Rhine River, stretching across Germany, water levels are running dangerously low. Italy's longest river is drying up so fast that boats are getting stuck. In Spain, wildfires are raging. In Switzerland, army helicopters are airdropping water to help farm animals. And parts of Britain are under an extreme heat warning again. NBC News correspondent Matt Bradley is live from London with more. Matt, it sounds apocalyptic. Yeah, I mean, it's really not that bad by American standards. It's reached 90 degrees here. This is the same temperature today, the high here in London, that we're going to be seeing in Mar-a-Lago, Florida, where some of my colleagues are reporting right now. And that is really freakish for a lot of British people. To see Florida-type temperatures in the middle of summer, it just doesn't really happen here, not regularly. But the fact is, British people are getting used to it. This is only thir three weeks ago that they had really those eye-popping headlines we saw, maximum record-breaking temperatures here in London, over 104 degrees Fahrenheit for the first time ever since records have been kept. Well, we're not seeing those same um, superlatives now, but think about it. For the last couple of months, we've seen unseasonably warm temperatures here in London, combined with the fact that there haven't been any real rainstorms or any real precipitation at all. And that's why here in Greenwich Park and behind me, Lindsay, you have a great view of the city of London, but if you look down below the Thames River here, you can see this yellowness. Now, normally this park would be such a lovely, beautiful green, but now, like everywhere in Britain, it's parched and yellow. And that's something that, you know, is just a, the fact of the matter. A lot of people in this country aren't used to these temperatures. The, the public grass science, public parks, aren't really set up to handle soaring sky-high temperatures like you'd see in the southern United States. So this really is, despite a lot of people being out here enjoying the sunshine, this really is an environmental disaster, not just here in Britain, but throughout all of Europe. Lindsay? All right, Matt Bradley, thank you so much for that. And once more, those areas are not adapted like they are over here in America. The vast majorities of America has air conditioning until you get way up into your northern areas like Nebraska, um, Washington State, Portland, Oregon, um, your northern type states uh, because basically we're they're talking about right there if you look at the equator and that's basically all we have to go measure from is the equator if you'll go from the equator up you'll you'll find out real quick if you go on the other side of the the globe you'll find out that all them places that they're talking about is basically somewhere in the area of Chicago and maybe even a little further north than Chicago which once more they have not been adapted to having to have air conditioning and now they're seeing what they're seeing. So may, you may be asking, so what does this mean? This means that the planet is heating up. This means that I was right pertaining to the distraction of oil that was put there, not by the dinosaurs, but was put there by God, pertaining to reducing the heat from the center core pertaining to the mantle, and also, the oil was put there for a friction barrier whenever the platelets are rubbing back and forth together, all these rocks and stuff, it helps to eliminate the friction. And if you eliminate the friction, you eliminate the heat. Well, if you're taking out the oil out of the ground, you're taking out the materials that causes the lack of friction. So if you're taking out the materials that causes the lack of friction, you're basically causing friction. Friction causes heat. Heat now is inundating these areas like we could not ever, ever imagine uh, just as little as five, seven, ten years ago. We're on a path of destruction. 
this planet is on a path of destruction. And we have seen these indifferences, these irregularities going on with our weather patterns, and now it's showing up all over the planet. And it ain't just in the North Pole or the South Pole. It ain't just in Greenland or Ireland or Iceland or some of those other areas over there, but it is all over the planet. And if we do not accelerate crucial warnings in behalf of what we're doing to the planet, I'm just afraid that it's a possibility if the world lasts this long before it implodes, but I'm just afraid that 10 years from now there will be spots that will be similar towards Death Valley that will basically be inhabitable for not only human life but also animal life. In other words, it could get just as dry and get just as horribly catastrophically uh, bad as it is in places like Africa and Death Valley and other places throughout the world. This is no joke. And it don't need to be addressed like a joke. It needs to be addressed with all urgency, hands on board towards trying to save ourselves. Because if we don't, if I'm not mistaken, the first heat wave that hit out there this year caused a great deal of death. Because once more, you got people out there that's not adapted to this kind of heat. They're, you know, you got people on medications. You got people uh, that don't have air conditioning, and whenever it got hot like this, it affects the elderly and the weak quicker and more so than it does uh, the strong and and the uh, the powerful. So basically, uh, they're seeing conditions over there, right over there, pretty close to Ukraine, uh, either east of Ukraine or uh, not be west of Ukraine or. Uh, north of Ukraine or even south of Ukraine, they're seeing areas now like we've been seeing here and like Australia's been seeing and like Africa's been seeing. We're seeing these now inundate the planet all over the world. So these climate deniers that claim that there's nothing to the climate warming up or nothing to the planet warming up, even though um, no, uh, NORAD and uh, uh, NASA and Doppler and other <clears throat> pieces, sophisticated pieces of equipment that cost hundreds of millions of dollars to put up in space, probably billions of dollars, uh, even though all them instruments are all reading the same thing. Danger, danger, danger. You're getting hotter, you're getting hotter, you're getting hotter. Our grid system over here in America is not going to be able to handle the indifferences pertaining to the hot summers in compared to where that it used to be versus where it's continually going. Um, this year has actually been not quite as bad. I mean, it, we did have a time of drought. It did affect a lot of the corn crops, probably even some of the, the bean crops. Um, but as far as being out west, as far as it being uh, as dry as what it usually is, they've actually got some pretty decent monsoon rains coming up through places like Las Vegas and, and uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and up towards Levada, and up towards the Southern California range. So maybe, just maybe, uh, later on in a month or so, maybe the, the fire season won't be quite as bad as what it was, but then again, you don't never know. It may be just as bad, if not worse, than what it was last year and the year before. We are dealing with a very, very uh, sensitive ecosystem pertaining to the balances of our planet. And whenever we get things out of balance, stuff starts happening that is not good. Stay cool. We are following a scary situation involving acclaimed author Salman Rushdie. The Associated Press is reporting that the 75-year-old was attacked on stage at an event in western New York. An AP reporter present witnessed Rushdie get attacked, either punched or stabbed, as he was being introduced. The AP reports that the author fell to the floor and the man was restrained. We do not know his condition at this point. 
Rushdie's writings led to death threats from Iran in the 1980s. This year, the author published a memoir about those threats. We are, of course, monitoring this news, and we will bring you any more as we have it. And that does it for me this busy hour. Okay, now let's go forward. Let's go forward, let's go forward, let's go forward. Hang on. Let's go forward. Oh, stop. They just need her. Back up a little bit. And we're going to go right there. It's been there for decades. It is a summer uh, authors festival, a gathering of intellectuals. Uh, not far from Buffalo, New York. Rushdie's work is controversial. In 1989, Iran's religious leader uh, called for his execution over the novel titled The Satanic Verses. Um, and he continues, I believe there were millions of dollars on his head uh, under this fatwa, which was never canceled. Um, Michael, I'm putting you on the spot, but as an author and historian, I don't even know if you know Salman Rushdie from intellectual circles. I bet. So, talk to me about how shocking this is. After all of these decades, he was, uh, we assume, still had security it was because he was still under a fatwa, but uh, a death order. But to happen at Chautauqua, I saw the pictures of the audience. There were hundreds of people there in a, in a, you know, a covered um, sort of outdoor pavilion, I guess you could describe it. What do you think? Yeah, I've spoken at Chautauqua several times, and it's a site of a famous speech by right. Franklin Roosevelt in 1936. And as you know, a very peaceful place. This is not in sort of a high crime area or anything like that. And the bitter irony, I remember Rushdie being quoted as saying around the time that the fatwa was put on him decades ago that he wasn't so much worried about being in danger at the time, but that decades later, someone who remembered this, maybe a waiter in a restaurant, he said, might put him in danger. Uh, I hope this is not a sign of larger outbursts of danger and violence in the society. I think you and I would both agree we've got to just find out what happened. I know. We, we don't know if this is connected to Iran and to any of right. us. We just know of the, the, the horror of it all, um, a right. celebrated all author. Right. Thank you so much, Michael, on all fronts. Always. And in just a few hours, the House is going to vote on Shalom. that sweeping package to come.